Watch out your head, head stop, no holding, and no low blow. Good luck, shake hand. Before I get to this fantastic bout between Clarissa Shields and Fataji, I want to address this issue once and final last time. Okay, let's talk about it. I actually put up a post early this week with um, Savannah Marshall fighting for Tanji. It was a good fight. I'm a fighter myself. I think it was great to watch. A lot of people didn't see that fight. Great entertainment, I think. And a lot of people was writing on the timeline, how pointless, what's the purpose, the Olympic doesn't matter. But you know what? who it matters to? You, the fans of Marshall. Because every time you talk about referencing Clarissa Shields' loss, it's always going right back to the Olympics. So let's get to this point. Okay, there's a stats called to both of them right there so you can go over them if you want but i'm gonna give you a little back on what i do know for sure if you guys ever get the chance to look at the olympics fights when they fought in 2012 you can see all the women fighters except those two fighters even savannah marshall fighting another woman savannah marshall fighting this woman shields fighting this one and so forth and so forth but that fight between shields and savannah was pulled not due to no conspiracy theories or anything that um, anybody did or anything dealing with the Olympics. Everybody knows that Olympics really doesn't count. Unfortunately, the people who write on my page saying that the Olympics doesn't count, but when you go on your pages, it counts all day long. But nonetheless, to the misfortune of Savannah Marshall losing so many fights, they had to give that fight over through using the point system to Marshall. They was not going to let an unknown like Shields win against their assassin so she could at least have a win against a known nobody like Shields. But what happened when they thought Shields was going to go back to her hometown to Flint, never to be heard of again, talk about her stories, maybe have a bunch of kids and just maybe just go off in the wind and never be heard or seen again in life. But what happened, the golden child wound up being Shields because she wound up getting picked up by Netflix and doing a documentary called T-Rex. If you've never seen it, check it out. It's one of the best documentaries on a a woman's fighter coming up in such hard times and winning against everything which actually that particular documentary put her on the map to open up plenty of doors for her giving her the golden key calling her the golden child but nonetheless this fight tonight is about her and Fataji and versus speed speed versus speed is what I called it great match great fight check it out very excited one too her motto your best is never good enough because your best is yet to come will we see it today Luchka fought in coming into the ring now, 28 year old, lost to Shields at the World Championships this year, went out in the semi-finals two years ago. She's been through this so often, of course, before Fontaine, but we know that the class in this fight comes from the other corner. The biggest question perhaps for Shields today, how will she handle the weight of national expectation as the USA look for that elusive goal here? Yes, they, they're accustomed to success, they demand success, and she's their last chance as she prays in the corner. Representing United States of America. And at her shoulder, Billy Walsh, the Irishman, who has taken charge of the US program. He came in actually to look after the women in the first place. And he's got the next wave, the teenagers. And both these boxers had buys in the first round because they uh, were the finals of the World Championships. As you see, that win over Savannah Marshall. Interesting response from the crowd. You can see that they're after the underdog here. Also, watch out your head. Head stop. No holding and no low blow. Good luck. Shake hands. So Shields in the red corner of the United States and Fonten from the Netherlands in the blue corner fought in a slight reach advantage. Shields though, the advantage in hand speed and class. 
and who knows maybe weight of punch as well the way she sets herself to deliver the hooks particularly is absolutely out of the textbook Fontaine seems already aware of that as she keeps the distance here early on fighting out of that southpaw stance but you've already seen it the ability of shields to slip a punch and an answer Straight back into orthodox dances now. We do see a lot of fighters trying that, don't we? But we don't see them very often in the first round of a championship fight. No. Might underlay just how confident she is. Big wild overhand right was slipped. Remember the women boxers not only wearing the headgear, the other difference is the four by two. That was a terrific right hand. The 10 second signal. Well, the crowd are all for the Dutch woman. End of round one. Half the Olympic Village has emptied out here. We're just next door, and it's been a great theme of the tournament. Just the body at all. You want to hit her straight away hands to the body. Don't start breaking her down. Okay? Okay. Is that a close enough? Is that working? Is that working? All right. So it feels she hasn't worked hard enough. Wants to go more to the body. Break it down, as he said. Good job. Keep benching her. Keep benching her back. Okay? It was something of a tentative start. Well, I think it's a, it's a question of how big the stakes are here. I think the disappointment, despite the raucous Dutch cheers, is the question of whether Fontaine actually took any advantage from that slightly tentative opening. And she hasn't. That's the, that's the disappointment. Second time. Two. United States closer Shields in the red. She's taken the judges' scorecards in that first round and from the Netherlands, Ruska Fonten. <laughs> Moving pretty easily away from that double jab and then ducking under and coming back with a big overhand right. I think it was taken on the gloves from our vantage point, but showed just the exceptional movement from Shields. The other thing we've seen constantly from her is ability to go to the body much more than many of the other women do. Definitely so. Definitely. Walked into one there, but uh, she quickly backed up. Bottom. There's a, a lot of respect for the power in Shields' with punches, and there's a great example of it there, the right hand. So we've got a wardrobe malfunction, have we? Uh, I think it's the boot that needs a little bit of tightening. There's a bit of a breather here for Fontaine, isn't it, as well? Who was starting to take some heavy shots. Yeah, it's the last thing Shields wanted. Again, lovely right rip to the body. So much of Fontaine's work so far in this contest has landed out of range, and it is very tiring to try to hit thin air. It sure is. There's another terrific example of it there as she tried to counter after those couple of shots, just ducked under by Shields, and Shields putting the pressure on as a corner asked her to do. Oh, a terrific performance, that. She's certainly got all the moves, hasn't she? Yeah, slipped and came straight back with the right hand. And a round two, another good round for the American.
Well, they knew they're in deep against Clarissa Maria Shields, and two rounds into it, it's gone exactly to form. My Dutch isn't very good, but I think the inference is you have to close the range more quickly. Do not let her get set so that she can demonstrate that amazing lateral movement that she has. And that was certainly the, uh, the body language of what he was displaying in the corner. Get there more quickly and deliver more when you do. And there's that slip and then... Probably straight. the best shot she's thrown in the fight. Yeah. Second sound. Not enough though. The pattern is well set here. Round three. So third of four two-minute rounds. Shields has won the first two. It's Shields in the red of the United States. Fonten from the Netherlands in the blue. Needs a big round here, not just on the basis of the scorecard. She needs to establish a little bit of respect from Shields. Met the World Championships last year. It was a win for Shields. It was Fonten who uh, vanquished Savannah Marshall early here in this the second prelim round great lateral movement just a little slip of the head looking at the record of her form through this tournament there were narrow wins weren't they in the quarterfinal and in the semi-final and uh, lauding her rightly that she has reached the final it was nip and tuck for her all the way and she is stepping up maybe two classes here against the favorite for the tournament at the start of it absolutely so whatever happens she's going to go home with the an Olympic silver medal. And, and at the moment, Shields is just too quick. Constantly slipping that, that jab. And carrying her hands low and hitting her often with the up jab. Plenty of confidence when you carry your hands that way. Oh, fantastic shot. Shook it to the absolute bootstraps. Sure did. It is quite remarkable to think we're watching a 21-year-old here who has accomplished so much so early. And, and there's the best example of it, though. The way she slipped those two punches into the corner could so easily have been forced back into the corner, but she's claiming center ring. She's stalking her opponent. And really starting to throw a terrific right hand there again. Another dominant round for Clarissa Shields. He's well on top for the end of round three. Crowd are loving our show here. Well, she can't afford to be relaxed now. She surely has it in the bank. But what I loved about Fontaine here was that she was reluctant to take a backward step. Her only chance now is to go out with all the artillery blazing. And who knows? And she did try that there. Oh, she certainly did. And was caught flush with that right hand, but still stood. There's the judges, all three cards, as you'd expect. But there's the difference between, you know, football and boxing. Football's 90 minutes pretending you're hurt. Boxing is every round pretending you're not and that's yeah. what she did she didn't want to give the judges any thought that that right hand hurt her yeah look at the way she stood takes a lot of courage i think the uh, pattern is clear even to this amazing touch contingent in the hall here now it's all or nothing can you land one big shot to claim the biggest prize of your boxing life after a bronze and silver in world championships it's that or nothing for fontaine fontaine in the blue needs a knockout as paul said Marissa Shields looking to go back to back and she's just 51 Olympic gold medalist at 17 the class fighter potentially the best female pound for pound fighter in the world today yep and, and to that point here's an argument pound for pound one of the best fighters man or woman in this tournament yeah technically in terms of strategy the level of her overall game yeah, absolutely. Look right at that. There. Just as you're saying it, look at that. It's just tremendous class. She knows that all she has to do is stay on her feet here. Knows that she's well in front. She's not going to just run, but she's doing her best to avoid, and that's what it is. It's hit and don't be hit. 
and she's not being hit at them. Look at that, just making a miss time and time again. It's a masterclass. She's schooling the Dutch competitor. As brave as she is, too good. It was a slightly nervy, wasn't it, the opening minute or so, given the momentous import of this occasion but since then it has been simply breathtaking in its quality Ooh. Yeah, the only American three or gold medal about you you're, you're yeah. 21 four years ago she came from nowhere came from the clouds putting on a show here about to be inside the last 10 seconds Mr. Shields is calling on her opponent to come at her She's got it all going on this kid. And entertain it. And she's going to take an Olympic gold medal here today. Clarissa Shields, the United States. There'll be no taking that from her. It's a marvellous performance. The class boxer of the tournament. Well, well done for Fontaine for staying on her feet, number one. And number two, have we seen a more dominant performance in any final to date? I haven't. Look at how often she made them. Look at that. I mean, she's completely within in range. And just the head movement, too good. Oh. You Left hook. <laughs> you feel that? Had it gone on the chin, I think she would have been over. Yeah. But as you know, obviously, you know, around the temple area can be more you, you damaging. Got, yeah, you've got that bit of uh, headgear, of course, but... We'll the talk more about the headgear in a minute. By unanimous decision and Olympic champion. Pretty much that was the end of the fight. I think it was a great fight, great throwback to check out. Tell some friends definitely about it. We're going to be here, damn it, for a minute. Subscribe and hit that like button if you really enjoy. We have more videos to come, more conversation to give. So check it out. Boom!